Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how I became a professional skateboarder. So obviously everyone that becomes a pro skater has a completely different path that got them there. But in this video, I'm just gonna be talking about the path that got me to where I am today. And also I'll be talking about some things that I think would be useful to any of you guys out there watching if you're thinking about trying to do something similar with your life. So first I wanna talk about what even defines being a pro skater. It's a really weird and open-ended term. And generally there's two main ways that people define being a pro skater. The first way is the most commonly accepted way of being considered a professional skater and that's by having your name on a board. So normally as a skater works their way up they find sponsors and companies that want them to represent them and the big turning point is usually when a skater goes pro and that's when they have a board company release a board with their name on it. So often but not always this is the starting point for a skater to start making money royalties off of board sales and then other companies can start making products with their name on it like wheels, bearings. So if you ask the average skater they'll say a skater is pro when they get their name on a board. However, times are changing obviously, and the second way I would consider somebody a professional skater technically is if they're making a living through skateboarding. So if you've noticed, there's so many skaters out there making a pretty good living on their own without needing relationships with sponsors, other companies, that sort of thing. People are finding more and more ways to support themselves through skating in other ways such as, you know, giving skate lessons through YouTube channels and things like Instagram and social media have opened this entire new world where people can be their own brand and kind of navigate through the business side of things themselves. And that's the weird thing about this because most people will consider somebody with their name on a board pro, but there's so many professional skaters that, you know, you think are at the top of the industry. They're a household name, but they're really not making that much money. I found out that there's so many skaters that I thought were on top of the world and these people are sleeping in closets, sharing beds, living in a house with 10 other skaters. Meanwhile, there's other skaters that have no place in the industry. A lot of skaters have no idea who they are, but they're making a great living through other ways like social media and YouTube. But anyway, with that being said, I'm gonna tell you about my life and how I made it work for me. So I started skating when I was 13 years old. I got my first skateboard for my 13th birthday from my parents. Thanks mom and dad. It's funny because the first day I got my skateboard, my parents told me don't go down the hill. So I'm a 13 year old hyperactive child. Of course I try to go down the hill and I end up jumping off and my skateboard goes right down the drain. You know those sewage drains on the side of the road under the sidewalk. So my dad actually had to come down with, I think he made a little loop at the end of a rope and he was lowering it down into the drain and he had my mom's camera at the time and was sticking his hand in, taking a picture with the flash to see where the skateboard was so that he could try and lower the rope in, hook one of the wheels with the rope and drag it back up. That was a terrible explanation. But anyway, I remember taking a long time. Like he was doing that for over half an hour. He finally got my board out of the drain. They were late to a dinner or something. I'm sorry, mom and dad, but if my dad didn't go through that for me, if he was like, oh, you lost your board, that's it. I would not be where I am today. So I'm really glad that he did that. But yeah, when I first started skating, I was not thinking about skating professionally. That thought was not even in my mind. I just thought, this is super fun. You know, I was 13 years old. It's the point where you go out, you knock on your friend's door to see if they can come out and play. You find whatever's in the garage to ride around. And yeah, I instantly became obsessed with skating because I loved it. It was so much fun. Anytime I had a free day, I was just in my driveway trying to learn new tricks, rolling down the driveway. I remember every day at school, I'd be using my free periods and lunches to try and finish my homework as quickly as I could so that when I went home, I could have my homework done and I could go and skate outside for a couple hours before dinner. And I remember on weekends being so excited to wake up, go to the skate park for as long as I could, skate all day. It became all I thought about. And also I loved skate videos. That was a big way for me to get inspiration. And if I wanted to learn a new trick, I would watch somebody do it in the skate video. I would pause it before the trick and I would go frame by frame and study what their feet were doing. Then I'd run outside and try to imitate that to try and learn the trick. And from the time when I started skating, I was obsessed with filming it, making skate videos. That's what I love to do. So when YouTube came out, I thought it was the coolest thing. YouTube became my my outlet for skate videos. And that's kind of how I got started with everything, just making skate videos, putting them out as often as I could. And my YouTube channel slowly started growing, but back then I didn't really care about it. I just wanted to put out videos so I could send them to my friends. And it went that way for a long time, just making videos, putting them out there, learning new tricks, just focusing on trying to get better because that's what was fun to me. I always thought of skating as like a real life video game. I think the next big turning point for me was in 2010, where the Element Skateboards Make It Count contest series came to Hawaii. For this series, they traveled from state to state and they threw these contests and they would take an overall winner from each state and they would fly them up to California to compete in these big 
finals together. It was super cool. And when they came to Hawaii, I somehow ended up winning the Hawaii stop. So they flew me up to California to compete in the finals. That was back in 2010. And I met so many cool people there. Deshaun Jordan was a finalist, Gage Smith. But yeah, while I was up there, it was my first time traveling to California to skate. So I hit up my friend Ilya Moran, who I had met in Hawaii while he was down here on a trip. So I hit him up and I asked, hey, I'm going to be up there for this contest. You know, when it's done, could I meet up with you and maybe we could film for a couple of days? And he was super down. So after the finals, which of course I didn't win, I met up with Ilya, I think for around two or three days. And we went out filming and we got some really cool stuff. So when I went back to Hawaii, I just kept thinking like, wow, that was so much fun. This is awesome. That's what I want to do. So a couple months later, I flew back out there and I stayed with him for two months this time. And during those two months, we filmed an entire video part. It was for this video, Ground Control. It was a video with a lot of incredibly talented people like Phil Seha, Michael Piwar, Chris Jocelyn. So when I got back from that trip, I was just thinking, wow, that was so much fun. That's what I want to do all the time. I love skating. I love filming, working on video parts. So I started saving money to move up there. When I was trying to save up money, I worked at Sears for two years and I was also doing babysitting on the side. Basically just trying to save up as much money as I could so I could just go up there and see what happened. So after a while of being in Hawaii and saving up money, I actually moved up there finally and I moved in with my friend Braxton. For those of you who do know Braxton, you know he's one of the nicest, funniest people that's ever existed on this planet. I've known him since high school and he's been one of my best friends ever since. So he's actually had wanted me to come up to LA and visit him for some time now. So he said it was cool if I moved in, started paying rent. I actually got a really good deal on rent because Braxton would just let me sleep in his room with him. I had an inflatable mattress next to his mattress. Although weirdly enough, I didn't even sleep on the mattress. I slept in the crevice in between my mattress and his. For some reason, I thought the crevice was more comfortable. But yeah, I really want to thank Braxton. I'm so appreciative because without his generosity and that opportunity, I would not be where I am today. Braxton also had two other roommates at the time, but Braxton was cool with me just sleeping in the room with him. One other roommate had his own room and then the third roommate slept behind the couch in the living room. So it was a pretty cool setup. And that time while I lived there, I consider one of the best times of my entire life. You know, every day I was out skating as much as I could, checking out all these new spots, meeting new people, filming as much as I could. And I was living off of food stamps. Those seriously saved my life. Every month I would kind of divide it up on how much of my monthly EBT I could spend at what time and it kept me alive. Thankfully at this time, I didn't have to worry about buying skateboards or products. I was flow for a couple companies and that's how it works out with companies. When you're starting out, you start off flow for a company. Usually they'll think, oh, this guy's kind of interesting. We want to hook him up, but they don't want to put you actually on the full team. So they'll just send you products. So I think way back then I was already flow for Thieve, who I'm pro for now today. They're one of my oldest sponsors and I love them so much. And yeah, I think for boards at first I was flow for enjoy and dwindle for a while, which was my dream as a child. And after that fell through, I was flow for Santa Cruz for a while. After Santa Cruz, this new board company came out called The Friendship. And that was started by my friend Tim of Tim and Eric. If you haven't seen any of the Tim and Eric skate videos, I would highly recommend it. They are incredible and they were some of my biggest inspirations growing up. But yeah, when I first started riding for The Friendship, they put me on as one of their first team riders, like an actual team rider. So that was my first step going from flow to like, oh, I'm on a company. And I'm so grateful for Tim for putting me in that position. I loved everything about the company. They were all about fun. Their board graphics were super cool. I loved everything about them. It was run by one of my skate idols. And I actually ended up putting out a video part with them on Thrasher. It was called my friendship part. Although the company is, you know, the friendship, but they just made it the friendship part because I think they didn't understand what was going on there. But yeah, that's kind of how I slowly grew things was just going out skating, filming for video parts. I also took any opportunity that I could to make money through skating. I think the first opportunity I had was through Ride Channel. So Ride Channel doesn't really do much anymore, but at the time they were a huge YouTube channel. Pretty much at the time there was Thrasher and Ride Channel and they were the two main outlets of skateboard media. And yeah, I remember filming projects for Ride Channel for $50 a project. And I was so excited to actually be making money from skateboarding. I would go and meet up with a filmer and film a trick tip for them and make 50 bucks. And I thought, wow, this is awesome. I remember taking a train two hours from LA down to San Diego to go to the Ride Channel headquarters where they had, you know, Tony Hawk's vert ramp and they had a bunch of stuff over there. And I would film slow-mo videos over there. I think I would take the train down. I'd film two, three, four slow-mo videos for them at a time and make, you know, 50 bucks a video. So it's like one to 200 bucks and go back up to LA thinking, I made money from skating. This is so cool. And even during this time, you know, of course I was thinking, oh, it'd be cool to be a pro skater, but it wasn't the main thing on my mind.
mind. I was just having so much fun being in LA, filming all the time that I wasn't even really thinking about that. Also, growing up, I was a huge fan of the Happy Medium videos. A Happy Medium one, I remember getting that delivered in the mail to Hawaii and watching it every single day when I first got it. Then a Happy Medium two came out and that to this day is my favorite skate video of all time. I remember being so obsessed with it. I would watch one of the Happy Medium videos almost every single day for months. So while I was up in LA, a Happy Medium three came out and they were premiering it in Arizona. And I remember thinking, oh my God, I live up here. I can actually go to the premiere of one of these videos. So we took a road trip to Arizona to see the Happy Medium three premiere. And I remember after the video finished, I went up to Hunter O'Shea, who is one of the two brothers that filmed the video. I went up to him and I was like, oh my gosh, Hunter, that video was amazing. I've been a huge fan of your work for so long. And Hunter actually knew who I was and he was a fan of my skating. So we kind of had this wonderful moment. And I remember after that trip, I just stayed in touch with Hunter and I kind of met some of the other people from the crew slowly. And at one point they came to visit me in LA. I think it was Hunter, Buster, Jeff Stevens, and John Rob. They came out to LA for a couple days to film and skate and Braxton was cool with them staying with us. And at that point I started traveling back and forth to Arizona to film with them as much as I could because I'll be honest, when I was younger, I had two dreams. One was to have a video part in a 411, although that stopped being a dream when 411 went out of business. And the second dream was to have a part in one of the Happy Medium videos or just anything filmed by Hunter and Buster. I seriously remember being younger and thinking, I don't care if I ever go pro, my dream is to just have a part with Hunter and Buster and I'll be able to die happy. So I was going out to Arizona filming with them. We got along really well. And I remember on one of the trips, Buster was talking about starting a new board company with John Mata called Sometimes Skateboards. And he asked me to ride for them. And to me, this was like my way to have my dream come true. I love these guys. I love everything they do. And they were working on a full video to release for Sometimes Skateboards. And I was thinking, wow, I could actually have a video part with these guys. This is what I've wanted my entire life. So while I was super appreciative for everything that Tim did for me at Friendship, I decided to leave for Sometimes Skateboards. Just take a gamble and try out this new company with them because it just seemed like the right thing to do. We had a premiere for the video in Arizona. My parents, my family came out and actually that's when I turned pro. Sometimes Skateboards gave me a pro skateboard and it was one of the greatest nights of my entire life. I'll never forget it. So after that happened, it kind of gave the green light to some of my other sponsors to give me pro products. Right after that happened, I had a signature wheel come out with Force Wheels and I had a signature truck come out with Thieve Trucks and suddenly I was making money off of royalties. I mean, it was not a lot. It was very, very little, but it was something. And for a skater like me who's living off of food stamps and sleeping on couches and inflatable mattresses, I was thinking this is amazing. So that's basically the story of how I went pro in that way. Sometimes skateboards was so much fun, but eventually that unfortunately went out of business. So I went to Three Block Skateboards, which was a new company that Andy was starting. And I spent a couple years on Three Block and it was incredible. I had so much fun there, but at a certain point they moved me over to Revive Skateboards, which is where I'm at now. And I love it so much. I get to be in a company run by one of my best friends and on a team of skaters that are some of my best friends. And it's just a good time and I love all of them. And it went on that way for a while up until very recently. And you know, yeah, I had all these sponsors. I had my names on products and I was making royalty money, but it was still very little. It was not enough for a normal human to survive in the world. Again, this whole time up until a couple of years ago, I was just flying around, sleeping on friends' couches, on floors, on inflatable mattresses, floating around, just trying to skate and film as much as possible. So I didn't really need a lot of money. So it wasn't really a problem. And then in 2019, I met Nana and everything changed. You know, things moved really quickly and soon we decided we were gonna get married. And I was thinking, this is awesome. I finally met the person I wanna marry, but I don't really make enough money to support a healthy marriage. So thankfully, Nana didn't care. I remember she told me, you know, I know skaters don't make a lot of money, but it's okay. And she's the one who actually gave me the idea to start working on my YouTube channel again. When I moved up to LA, I pretty much neglected YouTube entirely. I stopped uploading. I was focusing on everything else. So cut to two years ago, Nana's telling me, oh, you should just try YouTube. You could probably make money that way. And that was one of the best decisions I've ever made. I was like, okay, sure. So I started trying YouTube again, which honestly is what I love doing. I would always film. I would always be making videos. And that's what I've always loved doing. So it kind of just made sense for me to get back into YouTube. So slowly since then, I've been working on building my YouTube channel and it's been so much fun making videos. But when I say slowly, I mean slowly. Honestly, at times it was really discouraging because I was putting so much effort into it, but a lot of my videos weren't getting views. And I just kept thinking, okay, well just keep trying because you know, one, you're enjoying it. And two, if you just keep going and you're really putting in the work, eventually something will work out. And I still have a really long way to go, but I'm excited to keep working hard 
skateboard edit. And honestly, with YouTube and skateboarding combined, right now, it's enough to support my marriage and keep me alive. I just have to keep going and really putting in a lot of work. But you know, I'm having a great time. I get to go out and skate with my friends. I get to go skate with my wife, make videos with her. And the cool thing to me is that it's kind of like a video diary where, you know, when we can't skate anymore, when we're getting too old, we can go and watch all these videos and look back and have all these memories, which is really awesome. So yeah, I'm not the greatest example of how to make an incredible living off of skating, but that's how I managed to do it. And of course, there are other opportunities that come up, you know, collaborations on social media with Instagram or YouTube. And I started making my own merch, like this uh, How to Whale Shark shirt. This and a bunch of my other designs are available on my website, jasonparksucks.com. Sorry, this video went way longer than I thought it was going to, but I just wanted to show you my entire journey from the beginning to where I am now. And also to show you that literally any of you watching can make a living off of skating if you really want to. But yeah, that's it for this video. If there's any other questions that you guys have, leave it in the comments below. I'll try to answer your questions. Or if there's any other videos that you guys want me to make about certain topics in my life, please let me know. I would love to listen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Seriously, I mean, like I said, you guys just watching my videos is helping me exist in the world. So thank you, and I'll see you guys in the next video.